بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وأهل بيته التيبين الطاهرين ولعنة الله على أدائهم أجمعين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم We are on responsibility number 21 Enmity for the enemies of the Imam Part 2 in part one, we talked about Tabara, and in uh, this part two, we will talk about Tabara and also uh, Lana. He says, another responsibility is to ask Allah to remove his mercy from the enemies of the Imam, as this is one of the best ways to show our enmity for his enemies. So the author of this book, The Last Luminary and Ways to Delve into the Light, Sayyid Ridha Husseini Mutlaq, is saying that, uh, is responsibility from Allah that uh, to ask and make dua for Allah to remove his mercy from those enemies of Ahlul Bayt salam and those uh, put the curse of Allah upon them. We ask Allah that the, to send his wrath on those individuals who hurt and oppressed Ahlul Bayt, those who are enemies of Ahlul Bayt. And we are, this is a way that we're showing that we're distancing ourselves from those people and we want nothing to do with them. He said, a true believer must keep these enemies in mind and ask Allah to remove his specific mercy from them and pray to Allah to increase his chastisement over them. This act, this act of uh, sending la'na on these people, asking Allah to remove his mercy from them, is uh, actually considered a good deed and in addition has a positive effect on the spirit of a person and will assist in strengthening his soul against the opposing enemies. Because we're always uh, distancing ourselves from those individuals. We're, we're sending latna on them. We see that uh, in Ziyarat Ashura, which we recite very frequently, um, if we are not reciting it, we should try to recite it. it. has many benefits, and there's even books written about the benefits of reciting this ziyarat. But within ziyarat Ashura, we see, uh, we read the following. I detach myself from them, and I present myself to Allah and to you. I first seek, ref I first seek greater intimacy with Allah and then with you to win your love and patronage, and to make friends with your friends to cut off all links with your enemies and with those who planted the seeds of hostility against you and to reject and discard their associates, their followers, and their friends. I make peace with those who make peace with you. I search out and confront those who waged war against you. I make friends with those who stood by you. I strive against those who came in conflict with you. Therefore, I make a request to Allah to acquaint me with the awareness that perceives you and your friends, to set me free from the corrupting influence of your enemies, and to make me company with you in this world and in the hereafter, stand firm beside you and follow your footsteps closely in this world and in the next. So we see in the Ziyarat, in this passage from Ziyarat Ashura, it clearly states that we Cut off all links with your enemies, with the enemies of Imam Hussein salam, and those who planted the seeds of hostility against you, those who initiated this hostility which led to the massacre of Karbala, it all started in Saqifa. And we those are the ones who planted the seeds, and we discard their associates, their followers, and their friends. Anyone who takes the heroes as their heroes. Those who oppressed Ahlul Bayt salam, we are distancing ourselves from them. How can we love them while they love the, uh, the killers of Ahlul Bayt? So in Ziyarat, we are asking, uh, we are saying that we are distancing ourselves from those. So why are we doing the opposite that stated in the Ziyarat? The this opposing groups they call Muawiyah the uncle of believers. Isn't he an enemy of Allah? Didn't he curse Amir al-Mu'mineen from the pulpits for 80 years, some say? 
And if the answer is yes, then the ziyara clear, clearly to re, uh, says to reject and discard their associates, followers, and friends. So, if Muawiyah is an enemy of Allah, we have to distance ourselves from Muawiyah and his followers and his friends, anyone who calls him uncle of believers. If the opposing sects revere and respect the enemies of Allah, those who oppressed Ahlul Bayt, then we are commanded to reject and discard their associates, their followers, and their friends. This is very clear. The only ones who do not accept this uh, uh, obviously have some sort of political agenda uh, or fear that they lose some of their social life, for example, or worse, that they have love for these enemies in their heart. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove the love that they have for these enemies of Ahlul Bayt, to remove it from their heart. <clears throat> Back to the text. Uh, the author, he says, the, simp um, the greatest historical enemies of Imam Mahdi include the Bani Umayyah and Bani Abbas. And the believer must remember to curse these people every day and every night with his heart and with his tongue. The simplest level of cursing them is to detest them through one's actions. In this regard, Imam Bakr salam, has said, in, which is recorded in Wasa al Shia and Bahara Anwar, volume 86. When you have departed from your obligatory salat, then do not leave your prayer, prayer area until you have cursed Bani Umayyah. So we see that the Imams have enjoined on us to curse Bani Umayyah after our Salat. Also, other people were uh, recommended to curse them too, and inshallah we'll get into those narrations. Uh, then next, he, the author, he mentions a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala, <clears throat> which is found in the tafsir of Imam Hassan al-Askari It says, If one is too weak to support us, Ahlul Bayt, in the open, and, this, and thus he curses our enemies in secret, Allah Almighty makes his voice reach all the creatures from the earth up to the divine throne. Hence, whenever one curses our enemies, they support him by cursing the one whom he is cursing, and they praise him, saying, O oh Allah, please send blessings on this servant of yours, who is doing the best he can, and he would certainly do more if he could. So this person is sending la'na on the enemies of Ahlul Bayt, and he cannot do it openly because of the pressure from from surrounding areas or he has to practice taqiyya or for fear of his life or one of these things so he cannot do it openly so he does it secretly and uh we see that allah raises his voices to the heavens all the way to the arsh and that the um the angels support him and they also curse that individual and then they ask allah to send blessings on this servant he's He's cursing them even though he's surrounded by enemies, he's still cursing the enemies of Ahlul Bayt, even though he's in that situation, and that he would do more if he could. We see that Allah answers them. He says, I have responded to your prayers, and I have listened to your requests. Therefore, I send blessings upon the soul of this servant, and I include him with the company of the elect and the virtuous. So we see Allah praises this individual by, because of his sending lana on the enemies of Ahlul Bayt. We see example we mentioned before in the previous lesson, the previous responsibility. We spoke of Abu Dhar, where Abu Dhar came and he would send lana on Uthman for all of the corruption that Uthman was doing. So uh, the and then we see that when he was expelled, that the Imam. Uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam, also Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein alayhi salam, they all uh, walked him and saw him out. They took him to the gates of the city and bid him ver farewell, even though uh, the caliph had forbidden people to do so. 
Now, one might come and say, okay, why do we do this Latina, you know, this Latina, and uh, where does it come from? Is Latina in the Quran? Yes, Latina is in the Quran. There are mention of 36 ayat that I found mentioning Latina. And we'll go through these, inshallah. And then we will also talk about it from the perspective of the Ahlul Bayt, their traditions, and the traditions from Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. First ayat, Surah Baqarah, ayat uh, 88. And they say, our hearts are covered. Nay, Allah has cursed them on account of their unbelief. So little is that, so little it is that they believe. Allah says, Bal la'annahumu Allahu bi kufrahim fa qalila ma yu'minun. Nay, the curse of Allah is upon them because of their disbelief. You see the word la'an. La'anahum Allah. Allah has cursed them. Second ayat. And when, uh, this is also Surah Baqarah, ayat 89. And when there came to them a book from Allah verifying that which they have, and aforetime they used to pray for victory against those who disbelieve, but when there came to them a prophet that which they did not recognize, they disbelieved in him. So Allah's curse is on the disbelievers. Then the curse of Allah is on disbelievers. We see the curse of Allah. The third ayat, Surah Baqarah, ayat 159. Surely those who conceal the clear proofs and the guidance that we revealed after we made it clear in the book for men, then, then these it is whom Allah shall curse. And those who curse shall also curse them. Uh, we see that Allah says, These are those who Allah will curse them. And will curse them, those who curse, la'anun, those people. So we see Allah will be cursing them, and also another group of people will curse these people as well. Ayat 4, Surah Baqarah, Ayat 161. Surely those who disbelieve and die while they are disbelievers, these it is on whom is the curse of Allah and the angels and all of mankind. We see that Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَمَاتُوا وَهُمْ كُفَارُ أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ وَمَلَٰئِكَةِ وَالنَّاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ We see that upon them is the curse of Allah and the angels and of mankind all together. وَمَلَٰئِكَةِ وَالنَّاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ so we see Allah will curse this group of people, angels will curse this group of people, and all of mankind will curse this group of people. So when people come and they say, only Allah should curse them, what do we have to do with cursing them? Allah has cursed them. Uh, forget about us doing it. Let Allah take care of it. Allah will send Latna on them. Why do you have to do it? Allah says in Quran, there will be groups of people who will be doing Latna on these People who are deserving of the la'na, of the curse of Allah. So why should we come and say that people shouldn't do la'na? That's obviously against the Qur'an because the Qur'an is saying that people are doing la'na. It says, anas, people. It says, ayat 4. Ayat 5 uh, is from uh, Surah Ali Imran, Surah 3. Ayat 61. But whoever disputes with you in this matter after what has come to you of knowledge, then say, Come, let us call our sons and your sons, and our women and your women, and our near, uh, ourselves and yourselves. And then let us come in prayer and pray for the curse of Allah upon the liars. This is famous ayat about uh, Mubahila when the Prophet came and they brought the Ahlul Bayt with him. He brought 
uh, Imam Ali, Fatima Tazahra, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, alayhim salam, and they came and invoked the curse of Allah upon the liars when they came to do this against the Christians. It says, Then we make the curse of Allah upon those who are rejectors or those who are the liars. Let's see this word, Lana. Sixth ayat, Ali Imran. This is ayat 87. As for, as for these, their reward is that upon them is the curse of Allah and the angels and mankind all of all together. The same uh, mentioning or same wording as the previous ayah that we mentioned. <laughs> There are many of these uh, ayat in Quran, so someone cannot come and say that la'na is not in the Quran or that people shouldn't do uh, la'na because Allah is saying all of mankind is doing la'na. We have many ayat. Um, I think this sh should suffice. Maybe we won't mention a few of other of them, but I don't want to go through all of them for sake of brevity. So, we see, for example, another one, uh, Surah Nisa, Ayat 40, uh, 47. And whoever kills a believer intentionally, his punishment is hell. He shall abide in it, and Allah will send down his wrath on him and curse him and prepare for him a painful punishment. We see that... Uh, Let's find another ayat. <clears throat> Surah Ma'ada, ayat 78. We see that uh, those who disbelieved from among the children of Israel were cursed by the tongue of Dawood and Isa. This was because they disobeyed and they used to exceed the limit. لُعَنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ عَلَى لَسَانِ الدَّاوُودَ وَعِيسَ بْنَ مَرْيَمْ ذَلَكَ بَمَا عَصَوْ وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ So we see that they were cursed by the tongue of Dawood, by the tongue of Isa. So this shows us that doing latna by the tongue, by saying it, not just in our heart, but by the tongue, sending latna on these people who are enemies of Allah, enemies of prophets. Uh, sending this latna is a prophetic sunnah. Because here we find that Allah says two prophets are doing this, Dawood and Isa, alayhim as -salam. We see that Allah has uh, sent Latna on various groups of people, upon the Kafirin, upon the Dhalameen. Uh, we mentioned some of these ayats. Another one, uh, Surah Hud, ayat 18, um, where it says, Latna to Allah ala Dhalameen. The curse of Allah is upon the Dhalameen. We see that in Surah Ra'ad, Surah uh, um, Ayat number 25. It says, Those who break the covenant of Allah and after its confirmation and cut asunder that which Allah has been or ordered to be joined and they make mischief in the land, for those shall be the curse of Allah and they shall have the evil as their abode. Upon them, these upon them is the la'na. We see Allah is sending la'na on those who break the covenant after they confirmed it and they broke what Allah enjoined to be, uh, ordered to be joined together and they made mischief in the earth. 
think about this. What covenant did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala leave in the end of time? Ghadakum. Didn't he say, say Man kuntu mawla fahada Ali on mawla? This Ali, whoever I am, his master, this Ali is also his master. Didn't these people come and congratulate Imam Ali on the day of Ghadakum? Didn't they come? It's narrated in Sunni books and Shia books. They say, Congratulations to Amir al Mu'mineen. So they made a covenant, and, and after they confirmed their covenant, they broke their covenant after the death of Rasulullah. And they broke apart what Allah wanted to be joined, the walayat of Ahlul Bayt. They made the saqifa and they took the hukuma, the governance from Ahlul Bayt, and they made mischief in the land, all of the problems they did. This ayat is very fitting. They meet all of these characteristics, these Ahlul Saqifa. So if you meet all of these characteristics, as we say, um, if the shoe fits, then wear it. Those people who have all of these characteristics from this ayat, they have earned the la'na of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see that Allah and other numerous ayat have cursed shaitan. We say, وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكَ لَعْنَةَ, لعنة إِلَّا يَوْمِ الدين. And the curse of Allah is on you, shaitan, until the day of judgment. We see that <clears throat> um, many other ayat that have this la'na. There's also a verse in the Holy Quran, a uh, dua here, in Surah Sa'd, ayat uh, 78, وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكَ لَعْنَةِ إِلَّا يَوْمِ الدِّينَ This was uh, the ayat before, this was the one about the, uh, it says, um, <clears throat> My curse is on you until day of judgment. The ayat I mentioned, I wanted to mention about dua. It is in Ahzab ayat uh, 67, no 68. Rabbana atihim di'fain min al adab wal wal anhum la'nan kabira. O our Lord. Give them a double chastisement and curse them. Give them a la'na with a la'na kabira, a great, uh, great curse, a big curse, a big la'na on this group. So we see even that there's a dua in Quran that is asking, asking for Allah to double punishment on these people and uh, uh, send a great la'na on them. We also see that in Surah Isra, ayat uh, 60, that Allah says, And when we said to you, Surely your Lord encompasses men, and we did not make the vision which we showed you, but a trial for men, and the cursed tree in the Quran as well. And we caused them to fear, but it only adds to their great inordinacy. Uh, we see that... Allah has called a tree cursed. This tree, as we know it, uh, as from traditions of Ahlul Bayt, salam, this tree is Bani Umayyah. As we saw previously in the book of the, in the text of the book, where Allah, uh, where the, um, where the Imam is saying that we should curse Bani Umayyah after our salat. This is. Because uh, they are the cursed tree that is mentioned <clears throat> in the Holy Quran. We have some, so these are some from Holy Quran, some ayat. This is sufficient. I, we don't need to go through every single one of these. But this is sufficient to show that Allah sends la'na in Quran in various different cases. So let's go to some ahadith from Sunnah. To see, did Imams send Lana or not? We see that 
uh, Hadith in Al-Kafi, volume 8, page 245, Hadith number 340. Also in Bahara Anwar and Ta'wil Al-Ayat Al-Zahira, we have a narration that says, Hanan ibn Sadir narrated, I asked Imam Bakr alayhi salam about these two. He replied, O oh, Abu al-Fadl, do not ask me about them. For Allah, for by Allah, none of us Ahlul Bayt would die except that he is displeased with those two. No day passes to, uh, to us except that we are angry with them. Indeed, they oppressed us and denied our rights, and they were the first and foremost people who imposed themselves over us and opened the stream of injustice against us, and th that does not stop until our Qa'im, Ajallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif, rises. By Allah, no affliction was set up against us, and no trouble faced us, Ahlul Bayt, except that these two founded its root. This goes back to what I was mentioning before from Ziyarat Ashura that they planted the seeds for Karbala in Saqifa. And here Imam Bakr alayhi salam is saying that all the afflictions that afflicted Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam was because of those two because they founded the root. They set the, the platform for this. <clears throat> We see that Allah says in Holy Quran, And they carry on the day of judgment their own burdens in full, and also of the burdens of people whom they misled without knowledge. Alas, how grievous the burdens they will bear. Surah 16, Ayah 25. We see that uh, in taf this is reference from Tafsir Ali ibn Ibrahim al-Qummi, volume 2, page 548. Also in Bahar Anwar, the commentary on the this above verse Ali ibn, Ali ibn Ibrahim mentioned in his tafsir, Tafsir Qummi. I have this tafsir. I went and looked up these references. These hadith are mentioned there clearly. It says Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, Wallahi, there shall be no bloodshed, no clash, no rape, no illegitimate confiscation of property, except that its burden is on the neck of those two, without anything decreasing from the burdens of the people of the worlds. So we see that our Imam is saying that those two who initiated all of these uh, problems, all these, all the crimes that came after were because they abandoned the walayat, all of these problems, all of these things, uh, because of these two, and it will come back on their neck on Day of Judgment. <clears throat> Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Allah will not accept the belief of anyone who does not set, accept the walayat of Ali ibn Abi Talib and does not disassociate from his enemies. So we see we have to have two. We have to have Tawalla and Tabara. We have to have love of Ahlul Bayt. And we have to also have to have the opposite. We have to have enmity towards them and distance ourselves away from those enemies of Ahlul Bayt. We have to have love for them and their friends and uh, enmity towards the enemies and their friends. This is in Bahar Anwar, volume 26. Uh, another um, hadith from Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in Al Khasal by Shaykh Al Saduq. Allah, uh, um, Holy Prophet says, I have cursed seven types of people, and one of these types that he mentioned are one is that the person who has harassed my Ahlul Bayt, those people who bothered Ahlul Bayt, Abu Hamza al Thamali. Asked Imam Bakr alayhi salam, what is ma'rafa of Allah? Imam replied, to believe in Allah and his prophet and to love Ali and being away from their enemies is recognition of Allah. So all of these come into play when we talk about recognition of Allah. This is Bahar al-Anwar, volume 27. We see in uh, Basar al-Darajat, page 68, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, All the angels daily they seek nearness to Allah through our walayat. 
and they seek forgiveness for our lovers and curse our enemies. So the angels are seeking forgiveness for those who love Ahlul Bayt and they are doing la'na on the enemies of Ahlul Bayt. As we mentioned in the Quran, that the angels will be doing la'na on certain groups of people. One of these groups of people we see here are the enemies of Ahlul Bayt. Imam Sadiq salam says, It is incumbent upon Allah that anyone who has love for the rivals of Ali, even equal to the grain of a seed of mustard, he will not allow them to go to the Jannah. So if anyone has love for the enemies of Amir al-Mu'mineen salam, he will not go to Jannah. This is ta from Tafsir, Nur al-Thakalain, volume 1, page 585. Imam Bakr salam, said, If anyone wants to know whether he, he loves us or not, he should check his heart. If he has love for our enemies along with, with our love, then he is not from us, and we are not from him. This is in uh, Bahara Anwar, volume 1, page 47. So, if he, if we examine our heart, do we have love for uh, we have love for Ahlul Bayt, but do we have love for their enemies as well? If we have love for their enemies, then they are not. We are not from Ahlul Bayt, and that is one terrifying statement to have Ahlul Bayt come and say they are not from us. Naudu billah. We see that Imam Ali alayhi salam said, <clears throat> uh, Imam Ridha alayhi salam says, who are, there are the, some people who are more dangerous to our Shia than the Jajal. The narrator asked, who are these people? The Imam said, those people who love our enemies and they hate those who love us. This is Sifat al Shia from Sheikh al Saduq, page 50, Hadith 14. So these people, they hate, uh, they they hate the followers of Ahlul Bayt, and they love their enemies. Imam Ali alayhi salam in ta Tafsir Farat, page thirty nine, he says, "Anyone who loves our enemy is as if he is our killer. If we love the enemies of Ahlul Bayt, we are agreeing with what they have done, those murders that they have done." Those, uh, their killing of Ahlul Bayt. So we are agreeing with it. So we are sharing part in that. A very strong statement. Anyone who loves our killer is our, loves our enemy is our killer. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, on the day of Qiyamah, it will be asked, where are the opponents of Ali Muhammad, who caused them harm and oppressed them? Some will stand. Some people would stand up upon hearing this. There would be no flesh on their face, and they would accept that they were the enemy of Ahlul Bayt and that they had oppressed them. Allah would order them to be thrown into the hellfire. Imam Bakr alayhi salam said in Usulu Kafi, volume 2, page 18, The foundation of the religion is love of Ahlul Bayt and the love of those who love them and disassociating from their enemies is included in their obedience. So we must distance and disassociate ourselves away from the enemies of Ahlul Bayt salam. This is one of the rights that we owe Ahlul Bayt. This is one of the rights that we have upon us, that we have to fulfill. Imam Sadiq salam said, Holy Prophet asked his, uh, asked his companion, which is the strongest rope of religion which can be the cause of the deliverance of people and can make them to achieve eternal blessings? Some people said salat is the strongest rope. Others said fasting. Some said zakat. Some said hajj, umrah, jihad, etc., etc. Holy Prophet said, Whatever all of you have said are having reward, but all of these actions cannot become the strongest rope for the belief until the foundation of belief is laid on the love of Allah and His Messenger and disassociating from the enemies of Allah and His Messenger. Sulu Kafi, Volume 2, page 
page 125. So we see that the foundation for Iman is loving Allah, loving His Messenger, and disassociating away from the enemies of Allah and the enemies of the Messenger. How can we say we love Allah, we love His Messenger, yet at the same time we love and we praise the killer of the Prophet's daughter, the killer of Sayyidah Zahra alayhi salam. This by no means would be accept, uh, acceptable. Imam Rida alayhi salam said, Those people who oppress Muhammad and his progeny, it is obligatory to disassociate away from them. So it's wajib on us to disassociate from those people. This references Oyunu Akbar Rida by Sheikh al Saduq, page 268. Imam Rida alayhi salam says, which is mentioned in Usul Kafi, volume 2, page 136. Imam Rida says, One who wants to meet Allah with faith, then he should love the progeny of Muhammad and should disassociate from their enemies. So if we want to meet Allah with faith, we need to love Ahl Bayt and disassociate from their enemies. Imam Sadiq says that Allah has cursed the Khawarij. So we see that Latna is done on Khawarij. This is Al Kafi, volume 2, page 409. We see that Imam Sadiq salam, says about this ayat we mentioned earlier, Surah Isra, ayat 60, that uh, sh- Shajara Mal'una, the accursed tree that's mentioned in the Holy Quran, is Bani Umayyah. This is Tafsir Ayashi, volume 2, page 297. <clears throat> also, same uh, in Tafsir Safi, we see Holy Prophet said that it, that tree is Bani Umayya as well. Imam Sadiq salam says, That person is a liar who says that he loves us but does not remain away from our enemies. He does not distance himself from our enemies. It's Bahar Anwar, volume 27, page 58, hadith 18. Imam Sadiq salam, says, Imam Mahdi, Ajallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif, <coughs> will invite people towards the Holy Quran, Sunnah of the Holy Prophet, Walayat of Ali, and towards disassociating from their enemies. This is Bahar al Anwar, volume 52, page 342 and 3. Imam Sadiq salam, is, has hadith mentioned in Wasa al Shia, volume 18, page 561. One who doubts regarding the disbelief of our enemies and those who oppressed us is himself a kafir. So having doubts about the kufr of those people who oppressed Ahl Bayt, then they themselves become kafir. Very strong. We have to have conviction that those people who oppressed Ahl Bayt, they had kufr. They are not believers. We see, we see that uh, narrated from Sheikh Al-Kulaini and Sheikh Al-Tusi uh, from authentic sources that Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he used to curse uh, certain individuals after his Salat. We see that he used to curse Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, Muawiyah, Aisha, Hafsa, Hind, Umul Hakam, and Umul Hakam, the sister of Muawiyah. So Imam Sadiq used to curse these people after Salat. As we mentioned in the other uh, in the text, he said that he would curse Bani Umayyah also after Salat. So we see that there are numerous uh, traditions about sending la'na on those people who oppressed Ahlul Bayt. Holy Prophet Sallallahu said, Blessed be those who are fortunate to live in the time of the Qa'im of my Ahlul Bayt, those who will believe in him during his occultation and before his advent, who will love his friends and remain away from his enemies. Such people will be my closest ones and my friends on Day of Judgment. This is from Kamal al-Din, Volume 1, Chapter 25, Hadith Number 2. <clears throat> We see that Imam uh, Musa ibn Ja'far al-Kadham said in reply to a question of Yunus ibn Abdul Rahman who asked the I- Imam whether he was the al-Qa'im. 
He said, yes, I am Ka'im, but not that Ka'im who will fill the earth with justice. He will be my fifth son. May my life be sacrificed for him. For a long time he will be in occultation. Glad tidings for those Shias who in his occultation will be steadfast on him and will be having enmity from his enemies. They are from us and we are from them. They are satisfied with our imamat, and we are satisfied from their being from their being Shia. Then glad tidings for them by Allah, they will be with us in paradise. So we see that one of the qualities is that they will be having enmity of his enemies. This is in Kamal al-Din, also Bahar Anwar, volume 51. <clears throat> Some of these hadith are... Um, along the same line, so we'll skip through and go to some other ones. Holy Prophet said, Ya Abdullah, love for Allah and bear enmity for the sake of Allah, and love and enmity should be in the way of Allah, since walayat of Allah will not be achieved except by this way. No one can taste the iman, the faith, howsoever much he prays or fasts, unless he becomes like this. This is in Al Shari by Sheikh al Saduq, also Bahara Anwar, volume 69, page 236, Hadith 1. So we need to love for sake of Allah and hate for sake of Allah. Also, reference for that is Oyun al Akbar Ridha and uh, Amali by Sheikh al Saduq. A person came and asked Imam Sadiq whether love for Allah and hate for Allah is part of belief. Imam Sadiq replied, whether belief is other than love and hate for the sake of Allah. Like belief is love for Allah and hate for sake of Allah. This is in Al-Kafi, volume 2, page 125. Imam Sadiq, salam, says, same uh, reference, he says, uh, page 127, he says, anyone who, whose love or hate with the people is not based on religion has no religion at all. Meaning our love for people and our hate for individuals should be based on the love and hate uh, from uh, for Allah's sake. A person asked the Holy Prophet, how can we understand that our love and enmity is for the sake of Allah? Who is the beloved one of Allah so that we can love him? And who is the enemy of Allah so that we can hate him? Holy Prophet pointed his finger toward, towards Ali and said, the lover of Amir al-Mu'mineen is the lover of Allah, therefore love him. His enemy is the enemy of Allah, therefore be the enemy of his enemy. Be the friend of the lover of Ali, though he may be the killer of your own father and your sons. And be the enemy of his enemy, though he may be your father or your son. Love of Ahlul Bayt salam comes above all. Don't we, it uh, says we have to be though the, you know, his enemy is the enemy of Allah. So we see, and there we, and he says, therefore be his enemy. So whoever, who is Amir al-Mu'mineen's enemy? Who led wars and fought against Imam Ali alayhi salam in the battle of Jamal, in the battle of Safin? They were the enemies of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Therefore, they are the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and therefore we need to be the enemies of them and distance ourselves and disassociate ourselves from them and ask Allah to remove his mercy from the enemies of the Ahlul Bayt. Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala <clears throat> has said, before I go, that hadith I mentioned is in Bahara Anwar, volume 69, page 236. Also, Al Shari by Sheikh Saduk, Ayun Akbar Ridha by Sheikh Saduk, and Al Amali by Sheikh Saduk. The next one we find Bisharat al Mustafa, and also Bahara Anwar, volume 38. Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi has said, Walayat of Ali is the walayat of Allah, and to love him is the worship of Allah, and to follow him is made wajib by Allah, and his lover is the lover of Allah, and his enemy is the enemy of Allah, and to fight him is to fight Allah, and to submit in front of him is submission to Allah. Imam ba uh, Bakr alayhi salam said in Iqbal A'mal, page 452, hadith 17, Anyone who does not accept the walayat of Amir al-Mu'mineen there is no good deed for him whether he prays namaz, he prays salat, or he commits adultery. 
It, he has no good deeds. We, uh, <clears throat> if he does not acknowledge the walayat of Amir al-Mu'maneen, the walayat of Ahlul Bayt, this is the determining factor whether our deeds are accepted or not. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, whatever good deeds our enemy perform, it does not make any difference whether it may be praying, fasting, or committing adultery or stealing. Anything they do, they will go to hellfire because they are enemies of Ahlul Bayt. This hadith is in Iqbal A'mal, page 452, hadith 18. Imam Bakr alayhi salam, which is mentioned in Al-Kafi, volume 2, page 388. He says, Imam Bakr alayhi salam says, Surely anyone who recognizes Ali is a believer, and anyone who rejects him is a disbeliever. And anybody who has his walayat will enter in the heaven, and anyone who is his enemy will go to hellfire. Imam Bakr <clears throat> alayhi salam, oh yeah, I mentioned this one. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam in, in Bahara Anwar, volume 27, page 58, hadith 18. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, That person is a liar who says that he loves us, but does not bear enmity with our enemies. Mentioned in Amali by Shaykh al Saduk, Holy Prophet وآله, said, May Allah curse the one who oppresses Fatima. So, any the killer of Fatima to Zahra, they have the la'na of Allah upon them. Imam, uh, we mentioned this one also about Imam Sadiq salam, cursing four men and four women after every Salat, which was in Al Kafi, volume 3, page 342. <clears throat> Imam Ridha salam, says in Unyuno Akbar Ridha by Sheikh al Saduq, volume 1, page 273. The sons of the killer of Imam Hussein are satisfied with the deeds of their forefathers. Anyone who is either satisfied or dissatisfied with any action is included in the performance of that action. Every person is, if a person is killed in the East and another person who lives in the West is happy with his killing, then that person is included in his killing. So if anyone is happy with the enemies of Ahlul Bayt and what they have done, they are included amongst those who have done those actions. This is why it is important for us to distance ourselves, disassociate ourselves, and show uh, we are um, sending latna on them by asking Allah to remove the mercy from these enemies of Ahlul Bayt and to send a curse upon these enemies of Ahlul Bayt. And this is this stems from our love for Ahlul Bayt because we love someone, we obviously cannot love those who are hurting them. <clears throat> The author of the renowned book, Mekyal Makaram, uh, Sayyid Isfahani, has mentioned 80 duties of Shia during the occultation of Imam Zaman. Ajallah ta'ala farajahu sharif. One of the duties of Shia, duty number 78, during the occultation of Imam, which is mentioned in his book, is to curse excessively the Umayyads openly and secretly. It is mentioned in, his, in this book that the Holy Prophet وآله, said to Imam Ali, Ya Ali, Bani Umayyah will curse you and for each of their curses an angel will curse them a thousand times. After his reappearance, Ka'im will curse them for 40 years. <clears throat> this is in al Khasal by Sheikh al Saduq, volume 2, page 579. So we see that uh, Muawiyah and the, and others were cursing Amir al-Mu'maneen on the minbar. But every time they would send Latna on Imam Ali, the angels would curse them a thousand times. Would curse those people who were doing the, the unjust Latna. <clears throat> Imam Bakr salam, when, said, When you conclude the wajib prayer, do not move till you have cursed Bani Umayyah. This is an uh, Ta'zib, volume 2, page 109. Holy Prophet uh, Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala, said, Anyone who is unable to help us and while sitting in loneliness, he curses our enemies. 
All, Allah Almighty uplifts his voice and takes it to all the angels from underground to the high heavens. Then all angels join him in cursing the one he is cursing. Then the angels praise the lover of Ahlul Bayt and pray for him. Ya Allah, pour your mercy on this man as he did whatever he could in your path. Had he been able to do more, he certainly would have done so. At that time, a voice comes from Almighty Allah. O angels, I have answered your prayer and sent mercy on his soul and admitted him to the group of my selected servants. <clears throat> This is in Bahar al-Anwar, volume 27, page 222, ayat, uh, not ayat, but hadith 11. Also mentioned in tafsir, Imam Hassan al-Askari, alayhi salam. <clears throat> Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, said, The lowest level in hell will be those who bear enmity in their heart regarding us and help our enemies with their tongue and their hands. The second grade will be of those who bear enmity in their heart and help our enemies with their tongue. And the third level will be of those who bear our enmity in their heart. <clears throat> so we see that uh, we have to have enmity towards those people who oppressed Ahlul Bayt, alayhi <coughs> salam. <clears throat> Holy Prophet said, Ya Ali, by Allah who raised me as a prophet, if a person worship Allah for a thousand years and he, he, he is not entitled for reward until he accepts your walayat and the walayat of your sons and he cannot escape your, he cannot accept your walayat until he disassociates from your enemies and the enemies of your sons. It means... We cannot fully embrace Walayat of Amir al Mu'manin until we disassociate from their enemies and the enemies of the Imams. <clears throat> That's Bahar al Anwar, volume 27, page 199. Imam Zain al Abidin, alayhi salam, in Bahar al Anwar, volume 31, page 605, hadith 54 said on the day of Qiyamah, Allah will not have mercy on three types of people, one who reject the Imam appointed by Allah, one who claims to be an Imam though he is not appointed by Allah, and the third is those who say that, <clears throat> that there are some parts, those who say that, they, that uh, those two have a part of Islam, have a share of Islam. So we see that anyone who says that those two who oppressed Ahlul Bayt laid the foundation for oppression against Ahlul Bayt have a share in Islam, Allah will not have mercy on those, that is one of the groups. And also those who claim to be an Imam, even though they're not appointed by Imam, they're self-appointed Imams, they will not have mercy on Day of Judgment. And those who reject the rightful Imam will not have mercy on Day of Judgment. <clears throat> Imam Zain al Abidin, alayhi salam, in Shifa Surur, volume 2, uh, says, Whoever curses those two once in a day, Allah will write in his account seven million good deeds, will forgive seven million sins, and will raise, and will raise his seven million grades. And if he sent curse once at night, then the same reward is written in his account. Abu Hamza said that after the martyrdom of Imam Zain al-Abidin, I met with Imam Bakr salam and narrated this tradition to him. Whereupon Imam Bakr said, Do you wish I should increase the reward? The Imam then said, Whoever will curse these two in the morning, none of his sins of that day will be written. And if he curses them once in the evening, then any, then any of his sins of that night will not be written. <clears throat> The late Ayatollah Sayyid Nasrallah Mustanbat saw Imam Hujja uh, <clears throat> and he saw that Imam was reciting the following in his kanut. He saw the Imam making his salat and he saw that the Imam was saying this dua in kanut. Ya Allah, certainly Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan bore enmity to Ali, therefore curse him. <clears throat> it is not only... <clears throat> 
we see that uh, Sheikh Jawad al Karbalai is saying that it's not only permissible to curse the enemies of Ahlul Bayt, but also it is wajib. It is part of Tabara, of distancing ourselves from enemies of Ahlul Bayt. Imam Ali salam, said the Jews got divided into 71 sects. Christian got divided into 72 and Muslims into 73. Out of 73 sects, 13 sects claims to be our lover, but only one will go to heaven and the rest 12 will go to hell. These 12 sects will, be, will go to hell used to claim to be lovers of Ali, but does not accept him as an imam successively after the prophet or used to love him, but does not disassociate from his enemies. This is in uh, Kitab al-Sulaym. <clears throat> we also have famous dua, Sanam al-Quraysh, which is narrated from Imam Ali, which is lengthy, and I will not mention it here, but you can go investigate and find it. Uh, and Majma'u Nurain wa... <clears throat> Wa Muntakal Bahrain, volume, no, page 208. Imam Ali alayhi salam saw a man holding the curtains of the Kaaba and was reciting salawat. Imam Ali did salam to him. Second time he saw the same person who was doing la'na on the enemies of Ahlul Bayt. This time Imam Ali did not send salam to him. He rushed to Imam and asked the reason. The Imam said, I didn't want to keep you away from reciting the la'na, the curse. Therefore, I did not salute you uh, to you since la'na is better than salawat and salam. Many people can say they love Ahlul Bayt, but they don't disassociate from the enemies. What good is their love? We have to, but this is why disassociating from them has a high is is has a higher um status because it comes from love we have love for ahlul bayt therefore we are showing it by distancing ourselves from their enemies from the ahlul bayt's enemies <clears throat> a person by the name of uh, harith asked imam sadiq alayhi salam uh, I have been informed that Imam Ali used to recite Salatul Maghrib with Jama'at and used to curse Mu'awiyah, Amr ibn As, Abu Musa Ashari, and Ab uh, Abu Umar Salmi in every second rakat of Maghrib. Imam Ali, uh, the Imam Sadiq salam, said, Yes, and you should also do the same. Holy Prophet said, this Ali is a sea full of treasures. He is the rising sun. He is more generous and giving than the river of Euphrates. And his heart is larger than the entire world. May Allah's curse be on those who hate him. This is Bahar al-Anwar, volume 27, page 227. So Holy Prophet is cursing those who hate Amir al <clears throat> Imam Ali ibn Musa Ridha alayhi salam says in Nafs, Nah Nafasul Mahmoom by Sheikh Abbas Kummi, chapter 3, section 2, hadith 15. O son of Shabib, if you desire that you may abide in the palaces of paradise in the company of the Holy Prophet and his progeny, then invoke the Allah's curse upon the murderers of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. <coughs> Holy Prophet Sallallahu says in Kamil Al-Ziyarat by Ibn Kaulaway, chapter 14, Hadith 7, One who hates Hassan and Hussein will come on Day of Judgment without any flesh on his face, his or her face, and will not get my intercession. <clears throat> Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa was asked concern, concerning the ayat of Allah, Surah 43, Ayat 28, and he made it a word to continue in his posterity that they may return. Holy Prophet replied, He, Allah, has placed Imama in the progeny of Hussein. Nine of the Imams will emerge from his offspring, and from them is the Mahdi of this nation. Then he warned the people, If a person stands on one foot between the Rukan and Maqam, 
of Ibrahim, but dies in a state bearing hatred against my Ahlul Bayt, he will never enter paradise. <coughs> <coughs> One of the companions of Imam Bakr salam, narrate that in one of his Hajj, Imam had five extra stones. He threw two of them on one side of the monument and three rocks on the other side of the monument. When asked about this reason for doing so, he replies, The angels bring those two and place them near this place and is only seen by the Ma'sumin. So I threw three at one of them and two at the, at the first one as the second one is more despicable than the first one. <clears throat> so we see we have many of these narrations. <clears throat> In uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala said, when you find the people of innovation and doubt, suspicion after me, do bara'a, disassociation from them, and increase your insults to them and oppose them and bring evidences against them so that they may not become greedy in bringing facade corruption to islam you must warn people against them and do not learn their innovations allah will write for you hasanat good deeds for this and will raise you levels in the next life this is in al kafi volume 2 ch chapter 159 page 375 hadith number 4 so it so shows here that we must warn people against them and bring evidences against these people so that they do not bring corruption into Islam. So that people do not think that these people, these opposers of Ahlul Bayt, enemies of Ahlul Bayt are okay. We have to bring evidences against them so that people recognize the problems with them. <clears throat> Imam Sadiq explains ayat 208 of Surah Baqarah, Enter into submission, one and all, and do not follow the footsteps of shaitan by saying entering into submission means accepting the walayat of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And do not follow the footsteps of shaitan means do not follow anyone other than Ali. This is Tafsir Burhan, volume 1, page 207. Amal al-Tusi, volume 1. Page 306, Basharat al Mustafa, page 304. <clears throat> and Holy Prophet Wasallam said, I will punish every group of Muslims who recognize the leadership of any unjust ruler whom I did not select, even if the individuals of such a group are pious and they fear Allah. Likewise, I will forgive every group of Muslims who recognized exclusively the leadership of the just Imams whom I have appointed, even if the individuals of such a group wrong themselves and commit bad deeds. So we see that Allah will punish those who uh, follow those rulers who Allah did not appoint, <clears throat> those who recognize the leadership of those people of Ahlul Saqifa. This is in Fada al-Shia, Hadith number 12 by Sheikh al Saduq. <clears throat> there are many more narrations. A lot of them are similar in wording. Holy Prophet said, The dwellers of paradise are those who obey me and submit to Ali ibn Abi Talib after me and accept his walayat. The inmates of the fire are those who deny his walayat. They break the covenant and they fight against Ali after me. This is Bashara to Mustafa, page 212, Hadith 2. Bahara Anwar, volume 39, page 208. It's easy to see from history who has fought against Imam Ali, who waged war against him, who oppressed him, who oppressed Fatima to Zahra, alayhi <clears throat> salam. And... Uh, Ittaqadat by Sheikh al-Saduq, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, He who doubts in the kufr of our enemies who have wronged us is himself a kafir. Ibn Abbas asked Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, Is there anyone who hates Ali? The Prophet said, Yes, some people who think they are from my nation, they hate him, and they have nothing to do with Islam. 
One of the signs of those who hate Ali is that they elevate people who are lower than him above Ali. This narration, Bashara to Mustafa Amal Atutsi, Bahara Anwar, Volume 16, Ta'wil Al Ayat, Volume 1. <clears throat> We will have uh, two more narrations and we will finish. Muhammad ibn uh, Abi Qasir al-Kufi narrated, he says, I never finished my prayers and never started it but with curses on those two. I saw a dream in which a bird had a red color in the sub a, red, a red color substance in a container. <clears throat> the bird entered the house of the Holy Prophet and removed two people from the tomb of the Holy Prophet. <clears throat> and applied the red color substance on their faces and then put them back in the tomb and flew away. I asked the people present there as to who is this bird and what is the red color substance. They said that this bird is an angel which comes every Friday night and applies the red color on these two and then leaves. After this dream, I felt very disheartened and did not like uh, feel like cursing them in the morning. After, uh, so then came Imam Sadiq and looked at me and smiled and said, You saw a bird in your dream. I said, Yes, my master. Imam said, Secret counsels are only inspired by the evil one in order that he may cause grief to the believers, but he cannot harm them in the least except as Allah wills. Surah 58, Ayat 10. <clears throat> he said, Recite this verse when you see a bad dream. Imam continues, he says, Wallahi, by Allah, this angel which has been appointed over them does not do this for their honor. But this is the angel appointed from the east to the west of the world, so that, so that if anyone is killed unjustly, then to take their blood and put it on the neck of these two, because they are the cause, the root cause of all injustice. Bahar al-Anwar, volume 47, page 124. In last narration, a man came to Imam Sadiq salam and told him, I sew two shirts. One, he's sewing them. One while praying for Muhammad, and Ali Muhammad, doing salawat. And the other one, while sending la'na curses on their enemies. Which shirt do you want? The shirt that I was sewing, saying salawat, or the shirt that I was sewing while saying la'na on the enemies. Imam chose the shirt made while sending la'na and said that I love this shirt more. So these are proof from sunnah. We had Quran, we have sunnah. And these are the, re the reasons why we send la'na on the oppressors of Ahlul Bayt. The enemies of Ahlul Bayt is due to our love of Ahlul Bayt. And we want to show our disassociation away from them. We, we are going to Allah saying we are loving those leaders who you appointed for us. These Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, these ma'asumin. And we don't want, these are your most beloved creatures. And we don't want anything to do with those who oppose them and those who hurt them and those who hate them and those who wish bad on them and their followers. We are distancing ourselves from them and we are asking for you to remove your mercy from the enemies of Ahlul Bayt. This is our responsibility which is mentioned in the book of asking Allah to remove the, uh, the Rahmah or the mercy from the enemies of Ahlul Bayt. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم والعن أداءهم